Hey guys, Will from Boosted Autos here. Today I'm really excited to get stuck back into some mechanical stuff on the car. So today we're going to be going from these crappy old shock absorbers to brand new MCA XRs. So in this video I'll be talking a little bit about these shock absorbers, these coilovers, why I've chosen these ones in particular and showing you how to install them into the car. So let's get cracking. Now the tools you're going to need for this job in addition to a jack and jack stands obviously are a wheel brace which you'll use to remove your lug nuts. Now I'll also use this to crack the 17mm bolts on the bottom shock mounts but you can use a breaker bar if you have one. I don't have one so I improvised with what I had and used that. Obviously a torque wrench, we've got a little short extension bar, a ratchet, the socket for your specific wheel nuts. A socket set, now I only have up to 19mm, the smallest socket that you're going to use on your stock suspension is 14mm, but I found on my coilovers the top mounts were actually 12mm once I was finished, so make sure you've got down to 12 and preferably up to 20 Now I only have up to 19 I ended up using an adjustable wrench to get my 20 inches, but I don't recommend doing that. Get the right tool for the job. A breaker bar is handy as well, of course. You'll also need a set of hex heads as well, that's to hold the sway bar links in place while you undo the bolts. I've used a 17mm spanner as well to hold one end of a bolt in place while I loosen the nut and a set of spring compressors as well. Now I didn't actually end up using them on the front, I only used them on the rear and look you can get away without using them, I just found that it made it a little bit easier but don't rush out and buy them if you don't have them but if you've got a mate that has them it's best to borrow them ahead of time just to make things a little bit easier. So the first thing we need to do is get the car up on jack stands. Now normally what you would do is jack the front first off the engine subframe and then you jack the rear off the diff but in my case I can't get my jack underneath the front of my car so I'm just going to go from the side here. Now you can see I've got my jack sitting on a piece of solid MDF there. That's to give me a nice flat surface so that the jack can move forward and backwards. The ground that I'm on here is flat which is absolutely critical. You cannot jack a car up or put it on stands on an uneven surface. So in my case the ground is flat but I've got this kind of rough surface here so I don't want to damage the jack or have things slide around so I've got it sitting on MDF. So we'll just jack the car up on the side, nice and slow. A little bit more. Put our jack stands under. And then gently lower the car down onto the stands, like so. Then we're just going to go around the other side and do the same thing. Okay, so we'll start off with the rear suspension because it's a little bit easier than the front. We'll start off by undoing the 14 millimeter nut that holds the sway bar end link in place. So you'll see here I'm holding it in place with a hex head and that allows us to undo the nut without the whole assembly spinning in our hand. So you can't actually undo this with a socket unless you're lucky. And then you can just undo it by hand once you've loosened it off. Now jack up the whole assembly until the stud is sort of even and there's no tension on it and then it just pushes out easily like so. Then release the jack again, we don't need that anymore. Now we'll move on to undoing the 17mm bolt that holds the lower shock mount in place. So I actually cracked this originally with a 17mm wheel brace just to get it undone and then it's very easy to undo with a ratchet as shown here. So next we move up into the boot and we undo the three plastic clips that hold the trim in place. And we can just fold everything out of the way to access the upper shock mount bolts and these are 14 millimeter nuts on the stock suspension. Now I will just quickly mention here that this is a little bit more tricky on the other side because you've got an additional panel that you need to remove. So it's just three bolts and then you can access the nuts from here. So next we want to put a little bit of downward pressure on the whole assembly to pop the lower shock mount out of the control arm. Now because I was doing this on my own, I used a spring compressor to make things a little bit easier for me to get the shock out. If you've got a helper, then you can actually do this without a spring compressor. So 
So again, downward pressure on the hub and the whole thing just kind of slides out. So we take our little plastic cover off the stock shock absorber and put it on our coilover and then slide it into place. So at this point, we wanna just hold the shock absorber in place and have a friend install the nuts on the top mount just to keep it in place. And then we line everything up and jack the lower control arm back up again to line up the holes. Then we just slide the bolt back through and tighten it up. Now we can reinstall our sway bar linkage. and torque everything down. So the upper shock mount plate bolts go to 29 to 36 Newton meters. And at this point you can also install your damper adjuster extension if you have one. This allows you to adjust your damper rate without having to remove all the trim to get to it. Now these are an optional accessory with MCA suspension. So now we set our torque wrench to 36 to 54 newton meters and torque down the sway bar and link bolts. Then we move on to our lower shock bolt and that is tightened to 73 to 93 newton meters. Then all we need to do is just reinstall the wheel and we're done. Okay, so that's the rear's installed. Didn't run into any nasty snags there. It was all pretty straightforward and went pretty much as I expected. So before we move on to installing the fronts, I just wanted to talk a little bit more about MCA as a brand and the reason why I chose these particular coilovers for this car. So MCA has been around now as a brand that you can buy in terms of coilovers for a good number of years, but MCA as an overall brand, as in Murray Coote Automotive, has actually been around for a lot longer than that. Murray's been involved in motorsport for decades, which he drew draws that experience into the design of these coilovers. So when you buy a set of MCA suspension coilovers, you're actually buying into decades of experience in the industry, which is awesome. So MCA is an Australian brand, in case you didn't know, and um, it's been very, very, very popular, particularly in the last couple of years. So personally, I've been using MCA suspension in all of my builds for the last four years. And look, I've always found them to be absolutely perfect. Never had any issues. The customer support has been absolutely fantastic. Probably the best customer support I've ever received from any brand. And that's really saying something. So look, I'll always go back to them for pretty much everything suspension related just because of my experience but look looking at the range itself it starts out with their entry-level coilover which is the MCA blues now they call it an entry-level coilover but really it's a lot better than a lot of other cheaper coilovers which you can get on the market uh, they're at a lower price point than the other ones but you're still getting the features and benefits of the more expensive ones in the range just with a little bit less customization so MCA blues are fantastic for people that want to do some track work they want to lower their car but they still want to have something that's capable on the street as well. Then we move up to the X series, which consists of XR, XC, and XD. So XR stands for the race series, and that's what I've got here. Now, all that means is that the valving and the spring rates are set for a more track-oriented or race-oriented experience. So they're sacrificing a little bit of overall comfort on the road to improve those lap times and improve that handling. You've got the XD, which is drift setup and obviously that's heavier springs and different valving again. And then you've got the XC, which is a really popular one. The XC is for comfort, and comfort is more to oriented towards comfort. So you're sacrificing a little bit of performance, not a whole lot, to give you something that's a lot more comfortable on the street. And their aim is to provide OEM quality or better ride 
regardless of the ride height that you set on your car. So that's a great choice for people that are daily driving their low cars. Then you move up to the Red Series, which was what I had in my previous two cars. Similar kind of features and benefits, but with the Red Series, you're getting the added benefit of being able to customize your valving and springs for your particular car. So what you'll do is you'll actually consult with MCA Suspension or their reseller directly, figure out what's gonna suit your car best, and then they set it all up for you from there. So that's a quick overview of MCA itself and the range. Now, a couple of other little things that set MCA apart in the design are also important. So you may have seen my previous video where I discussed base height adjustment. Now, base height adjustment is where you adjust the cup at the bottom of the shock body by loosening this collar and winding it up to lower the car. So effectively what you're doing is you're reducing the length of the strut to lower the car or extending it to raise the car. Now, what happens when you do that is you're not actually adjusting the amount of travel in the suspension to compensate for the adjustment in ride height. So what happens is if you lower your car too much, your wheel is then able to travel up and actually contact the body of the car, which obviously is no good. When you bottom out, you don't want to be bottoming out wheel to the body. You want to be bottoming out on the suspension strut itself. So what MCA do is they actually preset that base height adjustment from factory to be the optimum amount of travel for your car. And then what you do is you adjust your ride height using the spring perch position. So if you have a closer look at the strut here, you can see it's got this little weird spring here that you might not have seen before. Now that is called a helper spring. So what that helper spring does is that allows the primary spring to remain captive or remain seated in its position even when the suspension is fully extended with the ride height wound down so you can imagine if you were to wind that collar down the spring could become loose and then what would happen is the spring could rattle around and not return to its position when the suspension compresses again so that helper spring keeps that spring under a slight bit of tension and seated in its correct position now previous to this design what MCA did is they had a thing called a spring locator collar and that sat around the top here and I'll show you what that looks like quickly now and what that did was it allowed the spring to travel down a little bit without falling out of its position so it would go back into its seated or trapped position as soon as the suspension was compressed again but they've recently moved to this spring locator setup which I think is really cool so what that allows you to do is that allows you to adjust your ride height using the spring perch and the benefit of that is that you're adjusting the amount of travel which the suspension has available relative to the ride height of the car or the or the bump travel so what that means is that as you reduce the ride height you're also reducing the amount that the wheel can travel up which means even if you drop your car right to the floor you're not going to be contacting the body on the chassis now because you're adjusting the preload a lot of people think that that changes the ride quality but that's not actually the case now i won't go into the heavy details on that now but if you are interested to learn more about it i'll link a video that mca did above my head for you right now and that explains and demonstrates right in front of you really simply exactly how all that stuff works but look that's the main features and benefits of this suspension there's a lot of other little details like the type of bump stop that they use to maximize the amount of travel but I guess the, the key thing here is that the overall quality is just really good. They've put a lot of attention to detail into it. And um, you know, even just little things like when you adjust the damper rate, the click is really solid and it feels, it just feels like an expensive high quality piece of kit, which is great. So if you're interested to learn a little bit more about this stuff, do check out that video linked above my head. Also check out the MCA suspension website as well for all the details. But anyway, let's get stuck into installing these front struts. All right, so onto the fronts now. The first thing we need to do is undo our sway bar link. Then we need to undo our bottom shock mount, which is this bolt here, which is a 17 millimeter. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some downward pressure on the hub to sort of pop the linkage out of this bottom mount here, and that will make it loose in the bottom. Then what we need to do is we need to take this long bolt out from here. So we undo this nut, push the bolt out, we may also need to undo this little bolt here for the sway bar mount just to let that bolt come forward and past it. Then what we'll need to do is undo the two bolts in the top of the shock tower here. The whole thing will kind of drop out and then we'll be able to wiggle it out of the way with relative ease. So you don't actually need to use spring compressors on the front. I've seen a lot of other videos of people jumping on their car, you know, putting heaps of downward pressure on here trying to pop it out. There's a big risk that you'll end up putting the top of the strut through this panel here and damaging it or scratching around the lip here. So let's get into it. Okay, so we'll start off by loosening our 14 mil bolt on the sway bar end link, and this is exactly the same method as it was on the rear, making sure we hold that center piece in place with our hex key if we need to, and just put the nut back on again once you're done to keep it safe. Now, unlike the rears, the 17 mil bolts on the lower shock mounts have a nut on the other side this time, so you'll need to hold that in place with a 17 millimeter spanner while you loosen it off. Thank you. 
Just be aware also that there is a little bit of tension on that bolt and you'll see it pop up and make me jump there <laughs> when, um, when I pull it out. So uh, just be aware that that will happen on both sides. Now we just want to put some downward pressure on this joint to pop that out. So. There we go, so that's all that takes to just get that out of the way. Now we need to undo this top bolt. All right, so this bolt can actually seem quite tricky to undo. All you need to do is just put a little bit of downward pressure on the hub and it just kind of slides straight out. Now you can see there we are bashing into the bolt on here as well. So we'll need to just undo, loosen off the um, sway bar mount bolt there as well. We don't need to undo it all the way. We just need to loosen it off enough that that bolt can slide out past it. So just slide it up and out. Now we need to be really careful here that our hub doesn't roll downwards forwards because we don't want to be carrying the weight of the hub on our brake line. We obviously want to be really careful of that. So we're just going to tuck this up and out of the way for now. Next thing we want to do is undo the upper shock mount bolt and then we'll be able to just wiggle the shock right out of position. Now obviously at this point be very careful that it doesn't suddenly drop, make sure it's propped up at the bottom if you need to, or have a friend hold it. I can see in my case it's propped up at the bottom, so I'm just going to take this nut off. Alright, now it's loose and free to move around as you can see. Bring that down, and out, really easy. Obviously once again being careful that we're not resting the hub on the brake line there. So now we just need to put the new one in. Alright, so I'm just grabbing the little plastic sheet that went on top of the old shock just to protect it make sure we got it facing the right way so we drop it in being as careful as we can not to scratch stuff now this is actually a little bit easier than going the other way because the shock body is a little bit shorter in this case so just kind of drop it in there now you might want to put a jack underneath it just to kind of hold it in place while you get your top mounts aligned Now don't crush it. All we're doing is we're just jacking it into position so we can put those top bolts in. Right, so get those top bolts just kind of holding it in place then to get everything else realigned in the correct positions again so once that's roughly held in place we want to put our upper control arm bolt back in Alright, so that's in place. We'll just quickly slide the washers and the bolt on this side as well to keep everything together. Alright, and now we want to make sure that this is aligned correctly and tighten those top bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it in position from the bottom and tighten it at the top. Alright, so this part might be a little bit tricky to see exactly what I'm doing, but what I'm aiming to do here is align the hole in the bottom mount of the shock absorber with the mounting hole of the lower control arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the jack to kind of raise it into place 
like so, and then we'll just slip the bolt through. So go really, really slowly. It's really important here that we don't put any tension on anything. We're just using the jack as a guide to line up the hole. Hopefully that's perfect. So try and slide our bolt back through. There you go, you see that pushes through really easily, which means everything's lined up properly. So leave that, leave that jack under there for now while we put this nut on. And we'll tighten that back up. Not gonna torque it just yet, we're just tightening it up. All right, so that's up nice and tight, but not torqued yet. Next thing we wanna do is reinstall our sway bar link. So you may find if this is the first side that you've done that you can't actually reach your sway bar mounting point because there's too much tension on the bar. That's simply because you've got an uneven amount of stretch between the two sides. Because the shock body is longer on one side than the other with the, um, with the stock suspension still in place, the sway bar's got some tension on it. So all we need to do is just disconnect the sway bar on the other side as well. And then we'll reconnect them all again together once, once we've finished the other side. So if you're finding that you can't get this bolt in, don't panic and don't try to force it. Just wait until you finish the other side and then it'll go in like this. All right, so that's all of our bolts in place. Now all we need to do is just torque everything back down. So starting with our sway bar linkage. So that goes to 54 Newton meters. Done. The lower shock bolt goes to 93 Newton meters. And the upper shock mount bolts go to 36 Newton meters. And of course, don't forget to go back and reattach your sway bar on the opposing side if you haven't already. 54 Newton meters. All right, so the only thing left to do now is put the wheels back on and drop it down and see what it looks like. Obviously we'll need to torque these up completely once it's back on the ground. And the moment of truth. So this is what it looks like back down on the ground and I'm really happy with the way this sits. It looks really nice and fat and race car like and it's not too low as well because of the nice fat tires. You can see there's plenty of ground clearance still even though those guards are filled up. There's no issues with rubbing at all on the front. Everything clears quite nicely. On the back though, it's looking like we're gonna have to roll these guards very, very close up the top there. So we'll get those rolled in the next few videos. We'll get that all sorted out. So the next thing we'll do now is take the car for a little drive just to make sure we haven't got any problems. And then we'll take the car off to get a proper alignment done because that is obviously gonna be way out of whack having lowered the car so much. And I almost forgot, don't forget to torque up your lug nuts. Okay, so that is how you install coilovers into an NB MX-5. Process is very similar for NA as well. Now, look, I know I haven't done this video in 15 minutes like a lot of other people on the internet. I didn't want to do it in a challenge kind of way. I didn't want to rush through it. I wanted to show you every single little step of the process to give you the most information possible. So hopefully you found it interesting and useful. In the next video, we'll be taking it for a drive, making any little adjustments that we need to make and fine tuning the setup. We'll also have to roll the guards as well by the looks of things. So that will be a video as well. So lots of stuff to come. Then obviously we're going to be moving on to prepping the car for wrap and um, all that stuff. So if you're interested in the project, please make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.